My name is Hendrik Illes, of too many better known as Horrible Hendrik. Uh, I am passionate about saving lives. This is why I'm talking to you, because I want to show you a way, a way how you can share my passion. I grew up in Germany, and I was blessed with a wonderful education and a wonderful youth which uh, found a very sad end when I was forced to join the German army and uh, became a radar operator in a missile system. Changed totally my way of looking at the world and made me run away. It made me run away around the world. I went to many, many places, uh, which even brought many more, much more anger to me because of the prevalent social injustices I saw everywhere. So I turned to become a private adventurer. I spent two years uh, crossing the Sudanese desert on a horse, which had a name. I tried to uh, break the world record in hang gliding by going together with a migratory bird from Spain to Morocco along the Gibraltar stretch. I did many things like that. And I ended up one evening and on an island in the Amazon together with an excommunicated Jesuit priest. Uh, and uh, he was a one-man show. Without any help from anybody, he supported 10,000s of people. And the funds that he got in was from selling uh, plastified piranha fish. He almost got blind by finding the process of how about doing that. And uh, that uh, he had the only TV in a thousand miles around. And that evening we saw something on this TV. Now, in my early 20s, uh, I once had a dream. I had a vision. You can call it an epiphany. And it was um, something that you don't really tell other people that you had that epiphany. It was that I was chosen. So, <laughs> for what? So that night uh, was the night many of you will remember on TV, the green light of the first wave of attacks into Kuwait. And that made me really tick. And uh, I realized I was not born to be the first man to cycle to the moon, but I was born to be the catcher in the rye, to put all I had of my education and everything to protect people. Changed my life drastically from one moment to the other. I went into Angola, into the war, and for the next 20 years, I cleared landmines uh, under very strange circumstances. And uh, I made it physically all right. I'm a little bit wacko, and this is why I'm retired today and do other things. Being here in Namibia, we, uh, I learned about this horrible thing of these burned children in shacks. There is uh, something like four shack fires uh, a week, according to Namibian police uh, statistics. Most of the victims are children, and most of these incidents happen during the day. It's easy. The parents are not there. Children are alone. They don't have that type of risk management that I learned to survive these situations. So there is these horrible accidents, and I felt I had to do something because I learned through my wife about the activities of the group of artists, and I wanted to do something. I, uh, my good education, and uh, I spent the majority of that in Germany inside a big box of Lego bricks. So that uh, is my kind of thinking, and to think out of the box as well. I looked for some engineering way of solving this, and I didn't find one. But then one day, I read about a Brazilian man called Alfredo Moser, who in 2008 uh, was so frustrated with the permanent power cuts in his workshop that he invented that if you make a hole into the roof and take a Coke bottle and fill it with water and some, uh, some chlor or whatever to stop algae and just stick it in, the part that sticks out collects sunshine, and the part which is inside distributes sunlight. And with this, he could work on happily. So people saw that and uh, copied it all over the world. So uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful technology, and it's mainly used for people who live in very close, dense slums, because one 
shack in a slum is taking the light for another one, from another one. So this is a, a very nice way of uh, solving. Now, my topic tonight, as I said, is shack fires because I did not invent this, but I saw the enormous potential of using this to diminish shack fires and child victims in Namibia and anywhere else in the world. So, um, before we uh, go into the detail there, let's give you some ideas about the shekology. Now, what's a shek? A shek is something that is built from anything which either lies around or was on special offer at the hardware shop around. They all look a little bit different, but also all the same because the materials are given. Uh, they all have something in common, which is that they're burned down very easily. This is because people usually do not have cupboards inside that take their clothes and hang them along the walls. And if a candle or a kerosene lamp falls over, then everything <laughs> is up in fire and flames very, very quick. So two billion people every night have no electric light in their shacks. Two million people every year die from accidents with candles or kerosene lamps related to that. They spent 25% of their meager income to have one hour of light in the evening. And this wastes enormous amounts of money and makes our air of our precious planet totally dirty. So the process went round the world, there's uh, especially um, one organization in, uh, in Indonesia called the Liter of Light. They put about 150,000 of these installations into houses. According to the BBC, there is, in the meantime, millions of such installations all over. So, again, we, we, we don't have that need as these people have, but we have another problem. We have shack fires. So, when I when I heard about this, I thought, wow, this is good. Um, I don't believe that can actually work. Um, a bottle, uh, water, no. And I tried it on my terrace, and I was flabbergasted how wonderful this works. So I immediately went back into my old uh, program management mode. I wrote a proposal, made phone calls, spoke to the media. The campaign was running, many of you will remember. There was this big thing, free light for everybody, which is not really what it is. but. Anyhow, it was good. So I walked to the banks, I walked to the communication giants here, I talked to everybody and they all listened very, um, yeah, this is good, great, Mr. Il is great. And uh, nothing really comes out. My wife wrote this song, it went on radio everywhere, people listened to it. The original version is more kind of a manual for people that they know how to build this. So, and I had this vision. The vision was young people go all over the country in cars, they make demo uh, units in little villages, homesteads everywhere. People pick up the idea, uh, it creates low level entrepreneurship, and in a relatively short time, there will be 10,000s of such installations all over Namibia. Uh, and they will be in shacks, in huts, in schools, in churches, because you use, if, you, if one's not good enough, you just put a hundred into something. You can put them in a race. It's wonderful. To cut the long story short, it was pretty much a failure. Um, people didn't understand what I was talking about when I said, yeah, you just take this bottle, fill it with water, stick it in your roof, and problem solved. Didn't quite work. So, the only people that actually understood what I was doing of the business community here was the We Care Trust of Women and Brock because they have their outlets in the informal settlements. And they supported and we built this here, a shack on wheels. And this shack on wheels, um, then I took around to the worker meetings of big companies here, explained what it is all like, I took it to fairs, to schools, everywhere where there were people, and I saw something like 15,000 people till date through the shack. I close the door, they sit inside, it should be dark, it's not, it's bright, and they go, wow! And then they ask a question that we come later to, which is a, a really bad thing. So inside it looks like this, this is, comes pretty much to the original. What you see is the clothes are hanging at the wall, this is the cause of fire. 
the, uh, then something wonderful happened. I teamed up with a municipality disaster prevention team. Most of you won't even know that this exists because they don't work in your area. They work exclusively in uh, informal settlements. So uh, this is, for example, it should have been a little bit earlier, but this is what a shack inside can look as well. It illustrates that they look better inside than we actually think, but it also illustrates that the fire hazard is enormous because of the density, how things are stashed in there. So together with the disaster prevention team, which consists of uh, firemen, policemen, health workers, social workers, we rock up, and the Uyalila team, we rock up in informal settlements, and then people learn uh, what they have, how, how they can check that their gas bottles are not leaking, uh, how important it is to wash hands, uh, uh, to leave spaces between the shack so the fire engine can pass through, what is the number of the fire brigade, somebody is asked to call the fire brigade, la lu, la la, here comes the truck, and uh, the children can climb on it, it's one big thing, my wife sings the Uyalele song or something else, somebody has a prayer, it's wonderful people out there and they learn a lot and they use that system more or less. Uh, interesting is that it always takes so long to explain everything because you have to use four or five different languages, Not that's one of the reasons, one of the places called Babylon, that's what it really is like. So. This is again, this is uh, here in Wintook what it looks like. So uh, by talking to the people, there's a certain set of questions that come up. For example, hey, this is a really nice caravan you have there. Do you live in it? I said, no, no, I have a house, but this is, yeah, no, no, I have a house, but it's just to show you. And then other people who are not living out there ask me, so I don't see really the problem. Why in the first place do people build their shacks from corrugated iron? They could use uh, sun-dried bricks, much cheaper, better insulation. And here comes something important for everybody to know. People out there live with a mindset that this is temporarily. So when they have completed their mission here, like made enough money or children went through school, they're going to go back home, wherever that is. Then they just take the materials of the shack, put them on the back of a pickup or on a bicycle or on the head of their wives and go home and Zach and there stands the shack again. So the idea of the government of cheap housing is a little bit off-beat, it's not really what people want. What people actually want, if you would ask them, would be something like a trailer park with kindergartens, crime-free, evolution blocks, and in there caravans like I have, my shack on wheels. So when you're done, you go home or even for holidays. Now, I run around and bring light into the shack. Some people say, this is stupid. Why don't they just cut the window into it? No, people don't want a window. They, uh, it takes away their privacy. Somebody can look in what they do there. And it, it's an invitation to steal something. Is that is true or not, is not the matter. If people think it could happen, then that's the truth. That's how it is. The same is with a skylight. Why don't I just cut a hole into the ceiling and then sun comes in? Well, you can climb in there. Also, it gets cold. No, people don't want that. You don't cut up your shack. And the question is, why do want people want to lock themselves in anyhow? Well, we lock our houses, so they lock their shacks. It is Sunday afternoon for a siesta, for reproduction of the species, or to make homework. There are many reasons, good reasons, or just to close, to change your clothes, that you want to do that, to close. Now, there is people here who help, the artists, because it's not the banks, it's the poor artists who help poor people and build these things in the informal settlements without electricity, everything by hand. Here you see what happens when people get this light. They are totally happy. So some people really love it because they live in areas where there is stadium light from the apartheid times. They have light day and night all the time because Uyilele then gets the artificial light at night. The big question is always the same. Does it work at night? No, it doesn't work at night. But it saves children's lives. Isn't that good enough for you? That's the whole idea. Please. No, not good enough. 
All right, so, but that's not my department. Other people do that. You can buy solar panels, as everybody has seen. They come with lights with a battery. They come uh, with uh, mosquito tasers, uh, cell phone chargers, radios, everything is there. And in uh, many other countries, they're used. Kenya, is, for example, is an, uh, one example where they don't have shack fires anymore because everybody is using solar. Now, in Namibia, we can't do that, unfortunately, because we have a special culture, which is the culture of solar panel stealing. Uh, on the farms, the systems that people build to protect their solar panels are more expensive than the solar panels themselves. So nobody here will spend even $5 to buy something that can be stolen while they are at work, because that's the drawback of all these solar systems. They have to charge during the day out in the sun, and then you're away, and then somebody might change ownership there. How can we solve this conundrum? We have a solution and we don't have one. Now, my wife then for a birthday got this. Totally silly. It's only good for the coffee table or for uh, garden parties. You can hang it in the tree. It's charged. This one I didn't charge. And it makes wonderful light. Four hours of sun, six hours of shining. It's great. Just the same problem. You can't put it outside your shack and come back in the evening and think there will be two of them. So, no way. So I uh, then went to Kilimanjaro, did another explanation of the system here, and I took this along, showed it to the people, and, uh, and it worked. Now, why did it work? Because inside the trailer, the Uyelele bottle charged the jar, and at night, as you see on the other side, then the jar is working. So you combine both, and all of a sudden you have uh, a solution which can't be stolen. Uh, there is more clever systems coming onto the market now. Same thing, you just sync something and cost $10 and you have it there. All you need to do is print out a manual from the Uyelele website. You do not wait for the government or for whoever else. You buy one of these or one of those, the other ones. You give it to somebody who needs it. Ask your gardener or your domestic employee who needs this. Give this out. People install it, and you save light, and you create a brighter future for our children. Thank you very much. It has been an honor.